Not going to give too much history on all of Load Runner here, but one of the most popular versions for the Mac platform at least was Load Runner The Legend Returns and afterwards an expansion Mad Monk's Revenge. Load Runner 2 went into new territory, isometric territory. This required a bit more involved problem solving for one, I mean for the player, not well the designers as well, but for the player as well. It required a little bit more involved problem solving having to think with an extra dimension. And it also opened up worlds to have a lot more architecture in them, as in they're designed to be pretty in addition to being functional. No matter how heathen this sounds, I personally found this particular iteration of the series to be my favorite of the Load Runners that I have played, and the reason I chose to LP this one next. It offers a pretty good challenge, especially if you want to get all the donuts. And I realize how ridiculous that sounds right now. In fact, I like how ridiculous it sounds so much I'm not even going to bother explaining what it means until later. But let's forget this interface for a moment because that's boring and let's get to an actual game. I suppose we should probably start with a tutorial so we know exactly what we're doing. Knowing what the actual goal of this game is and how to operate within it would be a little bit helpful. It's not entirely required. So this is the level select screen. We can choose any level anywhere in the game and start playing right there, play any level haphazardly, or we can start at the jump station and from there start the game proper, having access to every world in the game except the tutorial world and going through them in, in any order, trying to do them all to the end credit sequence. But um, we don't want to do that. These down arrows here allow us to change the world, and then these side arrows here allow us to change the level within the world. Different worlds have different visual styles to them. But we want the tutorial. Now, you don't have to do the tutorial first. Some people are crazy. Um, you can hit this little sad face here and be like, I don't want the tutorial. Bring me back to the jump station, start the game proper. Or you can hit the happy face because you want to go into the game knowing what you're doing. First level of the tutorial is called Run, which means a doctor designed this one, so good luck. Well, what am I saying that to you for? So we start in a blue electrical thingy, and pressing any key makes us appear. So, I think an important concept to understand is that we cannot fall off of an edge. Seriously, this is force field that stops us. We can fall off a corner. In fact, if you notice here, there's no like little yellow landing indicator. Whereas over here, you have uh, skull and crossbones indicating you'll fall into death. And I just illustrated that point in a rather stupid way, I must admit. All right, so we can run around this little area. There's no Z plane, only X and Y so far. We can dig. We can always fall into a hole we've dug, even if it's an edge. And I just killed myself again. All right, let's try to make it out of this level of the first tutorial level. So what exactly were we supposed to do? I don't know what those things are there. This looks like we can go in there if these bars weren't in the way. Oh, I guess we can get rich at least. Oh, we get all the gold in the level and then the portal opens and then we can escape. That makes sense. All right. So, oh, sorry. I forgot my keys here. It's still new to me. Which key? Um, all right. This is the, what's the cycle key that, uh, where's the key to move it? Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. Like, I don't understand why this is happening to me. Okay, anyway. Let's try this again. Alright. No, no, not, that's not, okay, that's, but. Uh, Alright. Let me be careful this time. No digging, no joke. We're gonna get past the first tutorial level without dying. I apparently, according to the counter at the bottom, I have one life and oh, that, damn, I leaned on the keyboard. All right, uh, let me, no, I gotta move around the hole this time. So I just gotta find the right, sometimes it's not my fault. 
the keyboard is is differently orientated than the isometrics because WASD is 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 not orientated with the it's not it's it's diagonal so I have to think about it's not my fault. Well, this certainly bodes well to my skill. Let's take another look at these controls. This is back in the era of cathode ray tube. In the top left corner, we have our movements. I currently map this to WASD. It's a little bit confusing at first because we're on a isometrically diagonal grid and WASD tends to be directly up, down, left, and right. So, But after a while, it kind of became second nature to me. Meanwhile, we have the digging on the right. Each, um, I've chosen the number pad to indicate digging in each different direction. Now, you can choose quote unquote basic so that one direction, well not one direction, but one button handles every direction, whatever direction you're facing. But it becomes a problem in my opinion uh, for digging off of ladders or digging in general, having to turn and face a direction and then dig. And in general, I think it's actually causes more problems than it solves. Advanced, if anything, is just easier. So that just leaves the lower left corner. Drop and pick up. All right, the example is picking up a beach ball and dropping a beach ball. So if we wanna play a game with uh, anybody we find in the game, Apparently using it causes us to turn into a weird checkerboard. All right, we can cycle through different things with the tab key. I don't know what they are, but given that right underneath it says bomb, I'm gonna assume that they're bombs. Probably wanna run away from that after you drop it. Pressing the shift key would allow us to drop off of a monkey bar. Pretty simple. And this is the key I accidentally pressed a little bit earlier, blow into smithereens. But I'm happy with all these controls. Now that I've gotten myself reacquainted, let's do this again. A uh, quick uh, overview of this screen. You can choose either Jake or Jane in the left uh, area. I chose to play as Jane. Then you can choose your color. I'm Erica Redmark, so I'm gonna play blue. Now I'm just kidding, I'm gonna play green. Now I'm just kidding, I'm gonna play yellow. So I can chose my name. My name is obviously Goddess. And let's ignore the stuff at the top because that's all spoilers. Let's go into the tutorial ourselves and learn about it all again. All right. Just run through the... There we go. All right, now we have ladders. So we still don't get anything if we run into the wall. We can't climb the wall but we can climb a ladder. Sound it makes is interesting though. And we still can't fall off an edge. We can fall off a corner. Let's try not to kill ourselves again. We can also move left and right on these ladders so we can switch from one ladder to the other. And we have a little landing spot to try to fall off of it, just like that. We can slide off the ladder and keep falling. And we can go here and, oh, whoops, uh, held it for too long. But it does illustrate an important concept. You can fling yourself off a ladder in a certain direction. And that's the ladder puzzles done. We've mastered ladders. Next up, digging. First off, over here, there's a bunch of grates. If we try to dig into any of them, it doesn't work. The other ones do, but we cannot dig grates. These are called undiggables, and they can really mess up your strategy and make you have to think about an alternative solution. But these clearly marked for us can be dug. We just can't dig the graded areas. So let's uh, get out of here and, oh wait, hold on, I'm getting a text message. Um, oh my, you naughty girl. I'll, I'll call you back later then. Anyway, we. Oh, they phase back in. I should have been paying attention. Anyway, 
Now that we know we can kill ourselves with phasing in blocks, let's try not doing that. Now remember, we cannot fall off an edge, so digging is the only way to get out of there, since there are no readily available corners. Thankfully, it's a two by two area. Okay, here, here is a common thing in many load runners, not the one dig, but the two dig. So we have to dig two spaces so we can fall down with space to dig one. Remember, we cannot dig directly below us, only to our sides. So if we end up in a one space region, we will be stuck and we won't be able to dig anything. And if we're on an edge, we're just gonna wait until we get phase into oblivion. Now I'm gonna dig like this and I'm actually not gonna dig the other one. I'm gonna instead dig the, uh, the purple one because you know I like doing things differently. But the main point is, you dig two and then you dig one, and eventually we'll have to dig three and then two and then one, or four and then three and then two and then one. You better be really quick. And they're not always gonna be all straight in a row. They might be L-shaped or something. All right, now we've got the hand over hand bars. If we, um, now look here, we have a landing square there on the gold and we have a lines showing where we're gonna fall on the hand over hand bar if we, go over on the hand over hand bar. You can't see it, but the death uh, crossbones are over there. So let's monkey around a bit. Now we can move along them. We can't move in a direction that they're not connected to, obviously. And that little landing circle tells us where we're gonna land when we release and hit shift. So we can drop off of the bar at any point. Now, we can't drop off of it here, but we can swing off of it uh, to get a little bit of extra distance since that block was a little bit too far away. So let's try this again. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Better idea. Probably should go get that gold first. And then we can go on the bar from here. And yeah, you can... Uh, move on to any hand over hand bar by either falling onto it or going into an open face for it. And from here, I think the mechanics are pretty well understood. It's just a matter of grabbing all of the, hey, hit the ladder. It's just a matter of grabbing all of the gold now. Oh, whoops. I accident, I did not mean to fall in here. Um, better dig my way out. Whew, that would have been bad if I couldn't dig my way out. Yeah, so be careful you don't actually fall somewhere. Yay, we've mastered hand over hand bars. Well, that was easy. Oh, wait, hold on. What are all these other things? All right, we have green things and red things. Running into the green things adds bombs to the lower right corner. We're stocked up one bomb each, and I can cycle through which one I have currently selected with the tab key. Let me drop a bomb in a way that won't kill me. So drop that, and it explodes in that blast pattern across one axis. The other bomb explodes across the other axis, and now we have this um, X-shaped bomb, which I assume would explode across both axes. Let's try to blow up this undiggable. Can bombs blow up what we can't? No. In fact, it looks like it even stops the explosion. Uh, this other bomb here is, is only vertical. And I assume that bomb covers every axis, but this spherical one looks interesting. Let's run away. Interesting blast, blast pattern. All right, um, can we still, we can't break undiggables, but can we break blocks with ladders on them? I'm pretty sure they constitute also as undiggable. And we get to see the blast pattern here. Yep, the ladder doesn't get destroyed and the blast pattern is every axis. So these red ones, they give me five of each bomb. And also, I can drop bombs whilst I am running. They drop right where you're landing instead of 
right where you're on instead of right in front of you. So that, oh, 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 I just started chain reaction. Um, I'm gonna get out of there. Get out of there. <sighs> okay. Be careful. Oh, my favorite thing. This tutorial level is dedicated to showing a chain reaction. So let's see another chain reaction. Don't want to get blown up by that. I don't know if it's going to kill me through the ladder. I should probably test that later. This is beautiful. Okay. This is the introduction to a character, a monk. Now, monks are very important to this game. They, they give you advice. They're very, very helpful. Um, they're there to teach you. They're there to inspire you. Uh, you got to give them a hug. So you just give them a hug. And... Oh, um, fuck you too, I guess. I thought, okay, guess. All right, you know what? You're going into the void. Okay, you're not going into the void. I'm gonna stay right here. You're not going anywhere, monk. This is for eating me earlier. <laughs> now he's gone and he ain't coming back. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh. Really getting on my nerves. Alright, these checkerboards seem to indicate... Hold on, wait a minute, that other monk kept following the path. He never chased us. Are these trying to indicate a danger zone? Let's step right next to this monk and see what he does. He... Oh, oh. Bugger. Wait, no, go away, go away, go away. Yeah, yeah, don't follow me. You don't want to follow me. You want to, you want to, you want to stay right over there. So apparently he can see me from two spaces, but once he can't see me anymore, he goes and abandons and goes back to his path. Best way to deal with them? Go a hole underneath them. Um, why is the entire map checkerboarded? Is this trying to tell me that the black monk is going to find me no matter where I go? That's really scary. Um, let's see. Uh-oh. Oh, they're coming. There's nothing I can do. Um, uh, uh, I'm cornered. Oh, dang, they're even going for an interception. Preventing me from, like, moving to the left without passing over them. All right. Now you're behind me. Now get away from me. Let's get out of here really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no. Denied. What are they all doing? All right. So I've got a beach ball. So I think I have to punch them with the beach ball. I don't know why they're making funny noises, but maybe they'll make different noises when I... They're in yoga class or something. They're moving their necks in weird ways. All right, what's this beach ball do? It makes me LGBT. Well, I already was, but thank you. Yeah, they're stretching and I'm blowing them away while they're in their yoga. <laughs> this is kind of fun. Oh, it's time. It was fun whilst it lasted. And what's this do? All right, that one turned me invincible. This one turns me invisible. They can't see me because, and I'm apparently also immaterial. And they're still in yoga. They're still making their funny noises and I still have a timer on this. Okay, we've got a bunch of clocks. So what do they do? <gasps> they turn into gold, give it to me. Wait, I've got a funny idea. If I get witch-timed, then what if I do it to the monk? 
<laughs> you stupid. All right. Well, he's not going anywhere. It's nice to know that I can walk through him. And it's also nice to know that he can still make sounds even though he's frozen, but whatever. Those don't look very healthy. I got three of them, and now I've got two of them. I'm not going to run over it. I assume that it's going to kill me. Let's use the monk as a guinea pig. Come on, come on, and yep, I was right. No, I don't want to jump off the world. We've got TNT. Actually, more specifically, it's a detonator. But we've got bombs, so I assume it does something with the bombs. Oh, it arms them. They drop and they don't explode immediately. Apparently they only explode when I hit the trigger and I have got a really funny plan. <laughs> this monk is going to be the most destroyed monk ever of all time. Like, there will never be a monk that will be like, oh, uh, I, I wasn't as destroyed as this monk was. Okay, that was stupid. But the point is, this monk is not going to see it coming. I'm going to fill this up. In fact, I need more firepower. I want every bomb, every bomb. <laughs> He's making noises. I think he knows what's coming. He's going to get screwed really badly. All right, I still need more firepower. You know, I just don't think this is enough bombs. I, I, I use up all my bombs, but I just don't feel like it's enough. I want more, but don't want to leave without doing all the fun stuff now, do we? Let's use this. Yes! That was satisfying. And we've got these weird items with a man turning into a cube. All right. And I turn into a cube. Now, as the block character, your options are limited. When you play as a block, your ability to move around is destroyed. Your ability to dig is gone. You can't um, do anything in the game, actually. Playing as a block is a very, very sad endeavor. How do you stop playing as a block? wait for the power up to run out, or I think you can move to get out of it. But first of all, I think it copies the block you're standing on. So I get copied into a ladder. This sounds like it would be very useful if this was multiplayer, but currently we are not there yet. So I don't see much use for this particular item other than possibly a brief reply from monks. And here we have the gas cans. Three of them, so I guess you can carry up to three of them. But let's start with seeing what one does. By the way, there's no gold on this map. All right, um, I got some, let me get some more explosives. Ones that are only one direction so I don't kill myself. That explosion was a little bit bigger. Compare, no gas can, small explosion. Gas can, bigger explosion. Can we add, oh, right. We can add another one to make them even more firepower. It, 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 it. And it increases the range. Apparently up to three gas cans can be combined together to form a very, very powerful blast. So, um, will this blast go through that indestructible block? We have enough firepower to see. Not even close. It doesn't, it stops it. Now, will it stop it from killing me? That's a good question. It blocked the blast and saved my life, and then the block phased back in and then killed me anyway. I really should have seen that one coming. Well, at least we know now what explosions can't and can do. So... What happens if I drop all these gas cans? I mean, will I be able to pick it up again? Oh, it loses its power. So you lose it permanently if you drop it. That sucks. 
So, oh, uh, let's get out of here before I blow everything up. Hey, who turned out the lights? Let's turn them back on. All right, so that, so basically this is saying that an up position blocks phase in and in down position blocks phase out. So by putting both of them to the up position, we've successfully created the bridge that we need. That wasn't too bad. All right, same exact thing. Come on, give me a challenge. It's the same thing, lever switches, doesn't matter. They do the same thing anyway. They phase in. It's the same thing. I know how to do this. Give me a challenge. You even know it's a tutorial. You could give me a challenge. Oh, that's what that ticking timer was. All right, I get it. Levers are different from switches in that they are timed, so you better be ready to make your moves very quickly. Uh. Yeah, go away. Go turn off. Alright, so in order to grab the gold that's sitting out of reach, wait a minute, it looks like it's actually above me. All right, the plates make things phase permanently. And they also seem to affect uh, undiggable objects as well. What's that monk complaining about? And what's this plate here do? Oh, it just gets rid of it. Good thing that block's in the way or that monk would get out. I jinxed it. Okay, um, I've got a bad feeling about this. We've got a tripwire and armed bombs. Gee, I wonder what's gonna happen. That's actually rather cool. I'm gonna blow up everything because I love explosions. Never had an opportunity to be this, hey, the portal didn't open all the way. I ran into it before it finished. Anyway, I never had the opportunity to be this this aggressive with the jewels of the Oracle. Okay. Just just collapse under my feet, will you? How very insulting of you. Thankfully, we are just gonna break all these bridges and we'll end up on the other side and the monks won't be able to follow us. suck at it. There's like four of them. That was only one, but still. They're not playing on. They're ignoring me. I come out. They follow. I come in. They ignore me. Hideouts. You go in there and the monks don't see you. But not very useful right now because we need to get the gold outside of the hideouts. Wait for them to come over to me and then leave them behind since I run faster and... Yay! Wait, we still got the rest of the game to do. 